This is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. Today we are so happy that we can be in your home and share a very serious program with you, one that we all need to take to our hearts and in our prayers. The first headline, Reclaiming and Restoring Biblical Christianity, rejected by a Christian network. And Warren, that's Rick Warren, speaks at two Islamic conferences. Why? And the one world religion rising. Oh my, oh my, we are going to be talking about that and much, much more. But before we get into all of this, Jack gave me some headlines of uh, beautiful, beautiful titles of hymns, some favorite hymns, and they all apply to older people. And I said, okay, Jack, older people. And of course, that is you and uh, Chuck Oman. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> all right, here we go. The first one. It is well with my soul, but my back hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows the trouble I have seen. And just a slower walk with me. <laughs> go tell it on the mountain and speak up. Yeah. Yeah, and there you go. Guide me, oh, thou great Jehovah. I've forgotten where I parked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You know, some of those songs, they're all beautiful, beautiful hymns, but it is kind of comical if you apply them to an older mind sometimes, Jack. I got to say this, you know, Chuck and I have been friends for a long, long time. And one day I said, Chuck, as you're getting older, you're believing more and more in the hereafter. How come? He says, every time I go into the kitchen, I say, what am I hereafter? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if Chuck and I live any longer, our friends are going to think we miss heaven. Now, let me get serious. This brother is a great servant of God, one of the greatest choir directors in history, one of the greatest musicians and trumpeters. We both started as young men with Billy Graham. Chuck and I have been in the ministry for 128 years, 64 apiece. We're not novices. I'm not some pipsqueak that one of the young sons of TBN could put me down, but he had no respect for an elder. I've been in God's Word 64 years. I know what I stand for. I know what I'm saying, and I've never had anyone try to stop me from preaching in all these great crusades, 222 mass crusades in ballparks and stadiums with 10 million attendants. This is the first time I've run into a real problem. I'm going to tell you the truth in a few moments. All right, Jack, we want to deal with this because we have had hundreds, hundreds of email coming into our office. Let me show you, Rexel. All right, This there is you just go. one third. It's going to total 2,000 just in the last week, and we've never seen such love. And they all say, thank you, Jack, for not allowing anybody, anybody to tell you what to preach because you've been in the ministry so long as to be in silencing God's prophets. Aww. And then Christopher Gregory. It's no secret to many who believe in traditional conservative biblical views that Rick Warren has ultimately forsaken the gospel for a social gospel, which is no gospel at all, but a gospel of popular ideas not founded on the word. Warren's beliefs of the removal of the cross in most churches, his pro-Islamic stance, and his purpose-driven theology all point to a complete rejection of foundational biblical truth. And we will talk about Rick Warren a little bit more. Michigan televangelist storms off the network, and you know Jack was the one who said, I'm sorry, I must leave you. God bless you, but I must leave you because I will not be told who I can speak about 
if they're going against God's Word. A great article from the Detroit News, the hometown paper. Yes, and Van Impe Ministry abandons TVN in clash over Islam. Now, the network turned back episode that challenged leaders over apostasy because Jack felt like they need to be named, and I'm going to ask him in a minute about that, playing Marbles with Diamonds by Vance Havner. I want you to see this dear man. Oh, what a man of God he was. He was truly one of the first to write some great books that I read, and they were so good. Jack, would you like to read this playing marble with diamonds? I love it. Diamonds. The devil is not fighting religion. He's too smart for that. He is producing a counterfeit Christianity like the real one, that good Christians are afraid to speak out against it. You are plainly told in the scriptures that in the last days men will not endure sound doctrine and will depart from the faith and heap to themselves teachers who tickle the ears. We live in an epidemic of this itch and popular preachers have developed ear tickling into a fine art. Amen and amen. All right. He, as I say, was one of the great men of the past, writing absolutely great books. And then here we see Reclaiming and Restoring Biblical Christianity. That is our offer uh, for this particular series. And, you know, their hypocritical judgment is merely a sign, and we're talking about the things we have on this video, a biblical prophecy's prediction that the latter days even believers may be led astray by what they are teaching. Now, we're going to talk more uh, about that, but let me just back up here a moment. And we want to get it all cleared away on this particular program. What really happened with uh, one of the largest television networks now, it doesn't mean that we've dropped uh, Christian networks. No, no, no. We have many, many more that we nine. are on. Nine more. But this particular one didn't want Jack to name some names. Now, Jack, give us a scenario of what happened, will you please? I'm a man of integrity. I may have faults. But I never lie to anyone because Ephesians 4.25 says that we Christians are to put away lying. And I talked to Paul Crouch. I'm going to name it. It's Trinity Broadcasting. Because he said, if you don't call me back, I'm going to let people know that you're unchristian and ungracious. So I called him. Now he puts out a letter on his internet saying that I was wishy-washy that I went back and forth. That's not true. I never even talked to anyone. All the conversations came from your son, Matt, to my CEO, Ken Vansel, and my media coordinator, Ken Muhlhoff. I never heard a thing. I was shocked the first time I heard that your station, your son, was going to change my Wednesday night program on which I had appeared for 23 years and built up a tremendous audience and give me Friday night, which is 25% less viewers. And I'd have to start all over again. But even then, I said, okay, that wasn't wishy-washy. That was the first I heard. The next thing I know, we are told that you're not going to run this anymore and you ran reruns. And people became totally confused. You said, we will not run this because you name names. Brother, that's a scriptural thing to do, as you're going to see in a minute. But I didn't say, I don't know what I want to do. I made a firm commitment. And then Matt called a third time and said, you will no longer even be able to promote your one-minute promo that Chuck Oman reads. And he said, we just had a board meeting, and it's unanimous. And when I talked to you, Paul, you said, no. We've got this documented. I don't know what my son's talking about. I'm still the old man running this place. And there was no such board meeting. Now, one of you two didn't tell the truth. Where we're putting away lying. I will never deal with this again. This is the last time, but I'm going to stick to it. I was so upset that you put these reruns on that I said, I'm through. And that was my first and final commitment, and I had a four-week cancellation cause, and I said to my agency, Integrity, one of the greatest in the country, Doug Neese and Sandy, you tell them I will give them the money to cover all four weeks to not play my program. I forbid it. 
Then, Paul, you talk to me. And I didn't say, oh, well, I'll think about it. No, no. You said, I will reinstate you. You didn't have to reinstate me. You never let me go. I quit. Let's be honest. And I'm glad I did. Almost 2,000 have already written, standing behind me. I've only had six that disagreed because of Schuler and Rick Warren, not because of TBM. And I'm going to say something else. All you folks think that I'm through? No. I have the largest network of my own in all America, Canada. Thank God for Daystar. They'll carry my program twice a week to all the world like TBN did. I paid tremendous amounts of money to TBN. You think that's all free and they just put us on there and you send them donations? And folks, do you know that I've already checked this out? I only needed 14 stations to replace TBN because I was in many areas already where they were. And now some 80 stations in just 14 cities, and that's all I need to cover what I had with them. 80 stations want us and will give us 50% reductions. I already took 38 stations for the price of what TBN charged me for one night per week for 52 weeks. Think of it, 38, I could take another 38 for anywhere from 50 to 70 stations to get the gospel out to all America, 70 more releases for the price of the two I received on TBN for all those years, tons of money. Thank you, Jesus. All things work together for good to them that love God. You had to split up the team of Paul and Barnabas over a fight concerning the nephew of Barnabas, John Mark. Now we've come to con this conclusion. Uh, we could reach many more people being divided. And I will not be on TBN. And I'm going to say one more thing to all these thousands who are backing me. I will be bolder than ever. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Acts 1.8. I'm going to preach it. And anytime anyone deviates from Jesus and from the cross and from Christianity, pushing for a one world religion with Islam and others, I will take a stand. I will never back down. And you've given me more vitality, vim and vigor, and a strong backbone than I've ever had because of what just happened. You know, Jack, I'm going to ask our people if they'll do something for us. First of all, Jack never does anything unless he can quote the Bible with it. You, you know, he's called the walking Bible. He never quote, does anything without quoting the Bible. But I'm going to ask you to do something for us, and that is to pray. Because you know what? All these wonderful stations that we have picked up are secular stations, and uh, many of the unchurched people will be watching. How great! And so pray that they will, maybe for the first time, hear how to accept Christ. Pray that millions more will be added to the kingdom of God because of what happened. How wonderful to know that we can go around the world with the gospel and every single week and now reach some people that might not have been reached because we're on these different stations. And I want to ask Jack a question. They didn't want you to name names nor reclaiming and restoring biblical Christianity, our offer of this week. Now, I want to know, Bible, does the Bible teach that we should name a name? If they're in the wrong, should we name a name? Oh, Rexella, we forget who wrote this book. God the Father, 2 Timothy 3.16. God the Holy Spirit, 2 Peter 1.21. Holy men of God spake and wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. They did what they were told to do by God's Spirit. And when they named names, it was because God's Spirit led them to do so. This is the right thing. And over in Acts 13, verses 9 and 10, Elamus was trying to keep people from coming to Christ. And Paul looked at him filled with the Holy Spirit and said, You child of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness. Oh, Paul, that's not politically correct. No, but the Spirit told me to say it. Again, we get to 1 Timothy 1.20. And there is a man by the name of Hymenaeus and Alexander who've learned to blaspheme. And Paul has to rebuke them. Again, 
in 2 Timothy 2, verse 18. We again have that name, Hymenaeus, but this time his partner is Philetus. And they have erred, saying the resurrection is past already and destroyed the faith of many. They said, oh, Christ is coming. We're not there. And he rebukes them for doing this dastardly deed. In 2 Timothy 4.10, Paul says, Demas hath forsaken us, having loved this present world. No, we're not going to take him back with us. He backslid. He turned from it. My answer is no. It's right to do when God says we're to do it. And as long as I said earlier, anyone ever talks against my Christ or the cross of my Christ or that he's not virgin born, that he's not God, he's not resurrected like Bishop Spung and Episcopalian. I did this not long ago on TBN. They didn't care. I'm going to speak up as long as I live. Right, Jack. Now, we had to explain all this today because of all these hundreds of emails coming in and letters. Now I'm saying, through. All right. Goodbye, TBN. Right, saying what happened. And uh, much of it is about our offer of the week. And we're going to be talking about that right now. And I'd like you to take a look, please. Reclaiming and Restoring Biblical Christianity. Take a look. America's greatest need is the reclaiming and restoring of biblical Christianity. Why? Presently, many ministers are attempting to eliminate the old-time religion. Doctrinal sermons have been replaced by self-esteem, psychobabble nonsense. Worse yet, contemporary services have turned the sanctuary and worship service into a circus sideshow featuring rock bands and oftentimes songs with meaningless lyrics. Let's restore the preaching of God's Word, the old hymns, the Ten Commandments, and God's demands for holy living. Let's turn away from practicing Hollywood's barnyard morals, covering every form of promiscuous sexual behavior. One prominent American minister presents the following rules to ministers for building a mega church and pleasing the ungodly. Don't mention sin. Remodel the sanctuary to look like a nightclub or casino. Remove every cross inside and outside of the building. Don't give invitations to receive Christ. Who are America's and Christianity's false prophets? Why are they so popular and embraced? Order the new video, Reclaiming and Restoring Biblical Christianity, and find out. All right, now, please, there's the hundred number, there's the address, make the call right away. We'll get this in the mail. And by the way, there's a wonderful pamphlet here, I'll talk about it in just a moment, enclosed with your order as well as a beautiful cross that you can wear. I love the cross. And the two programs, TBN, would not run. All that information is in this DVD. Get it, and you'll know the truth. So there's the address, and there's the telephone number. Make the call right away. We really want to get this in the mail to you. Very important that you know what is, this is all about and why they didn't want this to be shown. But we will send it as soon as we hear from you. And now, friends, Dr. Noah Hutchins has written a very, very important book, The Dark Side of the Purpose Driven Church, and gave 24 principles that is enclosed in this wonderful little pamphlet that I'll send to you that promotes and says what is wrong with the, the Purpose Driven Church, the dark side of the Purpose Driven Church. Here's the he is. Dr. Noah Hutchings, a wonderful man, and has written a very, very good book. Now, let me just say that these are things that Mr. Rick Warren wants you to do if you want a big church. Change the music to a contemporary rock style. Remove all hymn books and eliminate the choir as well. Change Sunday evening services and Wednesday prayer meetings, or even eliminate them. The word church can often be removed, and the church may be called a campus. Denominational names may also be removed. This one hurts my heart. Crosses and other traditional Christian symbols may be moved from both the inside and outside of the church building. The pulpit may also be removed. Now, I want that to stop one there, hurts. Yes, absolutely. Now, you know, we dealt with those first five of the ten that, that I want to enumerate, uh, enumerate right now. But Jack, you wanted to talk especially about the cross. 
I think it's a disgrace when a Christian minister says, remove the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ from the church internally and externally, and many are doing it. And Dr. Hutchins tells us he was called by two of the big churches in America because the pastor preached that they were going to take down the cross the next week, and they got his pamphlet, the ones we're going to send you on the 24 points when you order the DVD, and they passed it around to the membership, and the membership got rid of both pastors thanks to the writings and teachings of Dr. Noah Hutchings. Now, it's a shame because the cross is the center of the ministry of Christ. He made peace through the blood of his cross, Colossians 1.20. He endured the cross, Hebrews 12, too. Why? That you and I might get saved. Not only that, but the Bible teaches that there is going to come a time, and Bishop Sheen said this will come in Christianity, a Christ without a cross, and it's here, and they become enemies of the cross of Christ. And that's Philippians 3.18, but I missed verse 19 the other week. Let me put them together. Enemies of the cross of Christ who shall face destruction. Just this week in our devotions, Rexella, we did 1 Corinthians 1, 2, Paul said, I'm determined not to know anything except, except the crucifixion, the cross of Christ. Every time you read about the blood, Ephesians 1, 7, 1 Peter 1, 19, Revelation 1, 5, Revelation 5, 9, and 10, it's about the blood, and the blood was shed on the cross. Any man who takes the cross away does away with the Christian faith. No wonder 1 Corinthians 1, 18 says the preaching of the cross, the cross is to them that perish, perish, foolishness, but unto us it's, who are saved it's the power of God. Don't follow a man who tells you to get rid of the cross of Jesus, you 40,000 preachers across the world. All right, you know, Jack, I want to just put on the screen right now something about uh, Rick Warren. And Rick Warren keeps faith at Islamic Conference. Now, I am sure <laughs> that he did not get up there at an Islamic Conference and say, we need to recognize the cross of the Lord because they want to remove the crosses too. And Joseph Farah of the World Net Daily, check it out says he's now going to the second conference, and he said, why do you choose me? It so humbles me as an evangelical minister. I'll tell you why. Because Mohammed hated the cross. And he says when Christ comes back, he comes back as a converted Muslim, and the first thing he must do is destroy every cross. And Sheikh Kabeni says that is the job of our Christ. Get rid of the cross. And anyone who will not convert Jew and Christian should be put to death. And no wonder they ask you to speak. They'd never ask me to speak because I'd uplift Jesus in the cross, Mr. Warren. Oh, yes, that's the whole message, isn't it? Amen. The cross. Well, the five that I didn't get to last week, we're going to go on here and enumerate them. Eliminate altar calls or salvation invitations at the close of the service. Jesus has come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you a rest. Matthew 11, 28, that's an invitation. Revelation 22, 17, the Spirit and the bride say, come. Let him that hears say, come. Let him that thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. That's an invitation. 2,500,000 have come to Jesus because in 15,000 appearances in mass crusades and in 1,500 television shows, I've never quit without offering people the opportunity to receive Jesus. Oh, yes. And now eliminate such words as unsaved, lost, sin, heaven, hell, and other gospel verities. I checked out those words, 1,552 violations of God's holy word. For God forgive you, brother. Change the terms saved and lost to churched and unchurched. Oh, yeah. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, now shall be churched, Acts 16, 31. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be churched, Romans 10, 13. And the lost, the Jesus has come to seek and to save the unchurched. Baloney, what kind of language is that? All right, Jack, I'm going to combine these last two. Ostracize all who are not avid promoters of the new purpose-driven church program and use hostility on members who do not openly embrace the new program. Ostracize them, show bitterness toward them. Wait a minute. My Bible says, and it's Jesus speaking, by this show all men know you're my disciples because you have love one for another. And then again in 1 John 3, 16, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because God laid down his life for us, and, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. 
That's different from ostracizing. And then 1 John 4, verses 7 and 8, 12 and 20 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. If we love one another, verse 12, then we prove that we're really the Lord's. And if a man say, I love God, but he hates his brother, he's a liar. That's verse 20. You know, Jack, I'd like to do something right now that the purpose-driven church wants to eliminate from our churches, and that is give an invitation. I want to extend to you an invitation to have the Lord Jesus in your life. Will you open your heart to the Lord? He died for you. He gave his life for you. He is the Son of God. He's coming again. How wonderful to know that you can be forgiven of anything in your life you do not want there. Will you open your heart to him? Jack, would you give an invitation? Before I do, the Holy Spirit awakened me at 4.30 the other morning and said, and this is next week's program, which Jesus do you worship? There are now three. Who, what, where, when, why? Next week. And now the invitation. This is my 16,501st invitation. And two and a half million have come. Let Jesus in your heart. Oh, precious Jesus, say it. Thank you for the cross. That precious cross, that old rugged cross, where you died and suffered so agonizingly. For me, to get rid of my sin, Jesus, thank you for the blood that cleanses. Oh, Jesus, I receive you now. I accept the work of that precious cross and ask you to come into my heart. Lord Jesus, be mine today. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Oh, I trust that you prayed that prayer if you did. There's my address. Let me know. I'll send you this wonderful little booklet for steps in a new direction. The Lord's walking with you in that new direction.